Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Sideline Sato YouTube channel. Breaking news, uh, Jude Bellingham is going to Real Madrid. That is the current narrative that has been kind of floated out within the last hour or so. Um, first reports came out of Spain, and then Fabrizio Romano came out with reports saying that personal terms are all but agreed. Uh, let's just dive into this. Um, as everybody who's watching the channel may or may not know, I mean... If you don't watch me consistently, you might not know this, but I'm a very passionate Liverpool fan, and this hurts, not going to lie. Um, obviously, we've been chasing Jude Bellingham for a couple seasons now, and point blank, it's pretty embarrassing. But first, before we get into what this means for Liverpool, uh, let's get into the Fabrizio Romano report, which effectively states that the deal is progressing. It's about to reach the stage of personal uh, terms, i.e. contract uh, agreements, the length of the contract, the salary, all that jazz. Uh, and let's talk about Madrid because, I mean, kudos to Real Madrid. Um, they are arguably the biggest club in the world and they know how to do business. They really are just built different to everybody else. Um, when Madrid comes knocking, it's relatively difficult for somebody to say no, and that's what we're seeing here. Jude Bellingham, generationally talented midfielder, um, 19 years old, English international. Um, this is ultimately gonna be a proper Galactico signing. Uh, the fee is estimated to be in excess of 100 mil, probably closer to 150 mil, which is a big reason as to why Liverpool aren't going to be in the race because Liverpool is expecting to spend around 150 to 200 mil. But it's a proper superstar Galactico signing in every respect of the world word. Because now, quite frankly, you look at that midfield that Real Madrid has, it's Camavinga, Chuameni, Fede Valverde, uh, now Jude Bellingham, rumors are that they're going to extend Cruz and Modric for another se uh, season. That is five absolutely world-class midfielders on their day. Uh, and ultimately, they're basically sort in the midfield for the next decade or so. Um, you know, once you get to Madrid, it's really hard to get out of Madrid, primarily because of the pull, the fact that you're almost always competing in the Champions League and not just competing in it, but competing for the Champions League. You know, Madrid has won it more than any other club. So with that kind of gravitas, that kind of prestige, it's very difficult to say no. On top of that, um, they are still very much in this Champions League campaign still. They could win their 15th Champions League uh, this season, which would mean that they'd be on for 16 next year, which is even crazier. They're going to obviously recalibrate, and this move will be a big move for Madrid in the sense that ultimately, you know, they're going to want to knock Barca off their perch. Xavi is about to win La Liga with Barca, and Madrid are going to want to win that next season no matter what. They're going to want to win everything next season, as a matter of fact. They're going to gun for the treble, which, quite frankly, they do just about every year. And signing somebody like Jude Bellingham is a proper statement of intent from the club. It just shows that they are serious and they will continue to be serious and they're going to just do Real Madrid things. Um, the final point about Real Madrid that I want to bring up that doesn't really matter, I'd say, with this transfer is the fact that Carlo Ancelotti, is he going to stay? Is he going to go? What does he plan on doing um, You know, for the next couple of seasons uh there has been rumors that he's gonna go into international management manage brazil maybe not now with this news um but i feel as if the arrival of jude bellingham and the departure of carlo ancelotti or him staying on board still are completely separate things at madrid because it doesn't really matter who manages real madrid as long as the manager is of a world-class caliber can win the la liga can win the Champions League, is capable of doing that year in, year out. That is what Madrid wants. They have high standards, and they're showing that they hold themselves to such a high standard by going out and getting what I would say is arguably the most talented young midfielder under 25 uh, in Jude Bellingham. You know, he's only 19. He's going to grow at Madrid. And from 
Jude's perspective, he could, you know, stay at Madrid for the next five, six seasons and say he wants to go to the Premier League finally. Well, he's going to be, what, 24, 25? He's going to be in his prime and he could just play out the rest of his career in the Premier League or, you know, who knows? Things change. Um, this obviously isn't confirmed still, but um, it's all but confirmed. And I'd say when there's smoke, uh, there's certainly a fire and... In recent weeks, there's been a lot of smoke around Jude Bellingham to Madrid, and today we're getting confirmation that's basically in the final stages, and it's all but done. Um, before I get into talking about Liverpool, my club, and how just frankly embarrassing this is from their perspective, if you're enjoying these videos, if you're enjoying the consistency of the channel, please like, subscribe, share. Um, I'm going to keep pumping them out for you guys, and I appreciate every bit of support that there is on these videos. But let's get into LFC and just how embarrassing this is for the club, for FSG, for I'd say maybe even Jordan Henderson and Trent Alexander Arnold, who have been you know joking consistently about oh Jude's gonna maybe join and you know teasing him about joining Liverpool. Um, it's embarrassing because from an organizational perspective, this isn't how you approach transfers. You don't you know make it public and then be priced out and drag it for multiple seasons without proper reinforcement in the area where Jude will play, which is the midfield. Um, I mean, at Madrid, who knows? He might even play right back. We've seen Kamavinga play left back for Madrid. So regardless, it is um, it is very embarrassing and very sad to see from Liverpool. Um, but ultimately, you know, this is the reality. Um, Klopp is in a proper rebuild now. Uh, news just broke that Brighton are in for James Milner, that he's going to join them next season on a free. Um, so what does this mean for Liverpool? I mean, ultimately, if our whole budget is 150 to 200 mil, and it's either Jude Bellingham or, say, three to five new signings, maybe six, uh, which is what Liverpool needs to be back in contention for the Champions League to be competing, maybe not quite next season for the league, but, you know, right there from spots four to one, just kind of like threatening people with those positions and just competing at a high rate, three to five players will always be better than one, no matter what, especially because Jude is not some sort of cure-all for our midfield. Our midfield has issues that have been stretching for seasons and seasons. Tiago was just reported last night as being out for the rest of the season with a injury that's going to require an operation and he's not getting any younger as world-class as he is I mean Liverpool just need able-bodied competent midfielders who have effectively the legs to keep up with Klopp's system and I mean that system will probably change but regardless uh, I would say that signing multiple players is a no-brainer over Jude it is a shame that it got to this point and that the club let it get to this point and that, you know, there was an investment immediately after, you know, winning the Champions League, after winning the Premier League. They kind of allowed Liverpool to rot from within. And, you know, now we're seeing the likes of Milner, uh, Thiago, pretty injured. He's There's only a year left in his contract too. But Milner, Keita, Oxlade-Chamberlain, um, potentially the likes of Jordan Henderson, Thiago, um, potentially the likes of Fabinho leaving within the next couple of seasons or this next summer. And ultimately, that means Liverpool needs to bolster themselves. And who are the alternatives? What is the path forward for Liverpool? I'd say, you know, getting somebody to be able to play either right back or center back or both positions is key. key. Uh, Joel Matip is also aging. Virgil van Dijk is also aging. Konate looks good. Joe Gomez is out of favor. So I'll just get into it. At the back, I think that signing somebody like Heinrich or signing somebody like um, Jurian Timber is key for Liverpool. We need somebody to be able to rotate in there. And obviously we have some younger right backs, but they're not going to be quite up to par for... Um, the foreseeable future, I'd say they're going to maybe need some more time to adjust to the system and such.
But from the midfield, um, there's been a million types of players and different types of names that have been floated for Liverpool. Um, the likes of Alexis McAllister, Ugarte, uh, Marcus Turam, uh, not Marcus Turam, Kepren Turam, his brother, uh, Mason Mount, Gravenberch, uh, even Con Connor Gallagher, uh, Declan Rice, Moise Caicedo. For me, if it was, and obviously there's, you know, sort of different kind of requirements for, you know, the homegrown players or players, you know, that come from the academy and such, when you have, um, you have different players coming into a squad in the Premier League and other leagues, there's all sorts of little requirements that are needed for building a squad. For me, uh, if we say had only five signings this window, um, I would go with Alexis McAllister, Ugarte, uh, Turam, Mason Mount, and Gravenberch. Um, and obviously maybe Declan Rice or Gallagher ends up coming in for one of Ugarte, McAllister, or Turam, but all kind of requirements aside, my five ideal signings for Liverpool this window are McAllister, Garte, Turam, Mount, and Timber. Um, we shall see. Uh, I'm, it, I'm kind of like at a loss to an extent, um, but who couldn't see this coming? It's pretty obvious, you know, that um, Liverpool has kind of fell to the wayside in recent weeks and months in the Jude Bellingham race, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. Um, what matters is that Liverpool kind of build the midfield back up moving forward and kind of, you know, recalibrate themselves to become a team that can get, say, the next Jude Bellingham within the, ne the next couple of seasons or whoever that might be. Regardless, we just need appropriate uh, recruitment and assessing of situations regarding the midfield because there's just been a lack of that for years and years and now I mean Trent is kind of coming into like a more inverted fullback sort of midfielder position kind of like a deep lying six um, but regardless um, I am awaiting a communicado official from Madrid within the next couple of days and weeks. Uh, we'll probably catch news either before or after the Champions League final, or if they get knocked out of the semifinal, that's kind of how Madrid operates too. You know, they don't like having their fans be very upset for too long, but um, it's all but done. And, you know, what, el what else is there really to say? It's just kind of like an ultimate coup for Madrid. So if you like the video, please like, share, subscribe. There will be more videos coming out soon. Um, I've been putting out more shorts. I'm probably going to make this into a short as well. So if you enjoy the video, tell me what you think. I'm Sideline Sado. Peace.